name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with you. My brothers and sisters, as we gather here, let us first call to mind our sins in order to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are a sea at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ, and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You too go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. And those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Justice is a word much invoked these days, so much so that one can hardly escape hearing it. The word itself is thrown around with such abandon that we've hardly had time to pause and ask the obvious question. What exactly is justice? That question has been an endless source of debate since the beginnings of recorded time, and has puzzled and perplexed the greatest minds over the course of millennia. What justice is, though, fundamentally, is actually quite simple. It is someone receiving what is due them, someone receiving what it is that they are owed. 
And as a matter of reciprocity, justice therefore means as well that one gives to others what they are due, what they are owed from us. And that is all simple enough. The admitted complexity of the question of justice enters in when we move from the big picture down to the nitty-gritty, to the particulars of unique circumstances. Justice is what I am owed in giving what I owe to others. But what does that mean in the concreteness of my relationships within a family, a community, a workplace, and an economy, within a nation, and even in the relations between nations, and also in the church? What does it mean for me simply as a member of the human race? Answers to those questions are not so easily forthcoming, hence the debates that continue to rock our world. But let us step back, actually, and look at the big picture again. Justice is, again, fundamentally getting what one is due, what one is owed. And that means that in our most basic relationship, the one between us and God, justice for one party doesn't even actually enter into the equation. For as a matter of justice, it is true, we do owe everything to God. We must give him our all. But with regard to how God relates to us, he quite simply owes us nothing. That truism we might find jarring, perhaps even a bit perturbing. But it necessarily follows from who God is and who we are. The relationship is by nature an asymmetrical one. God simply is. He exists. We, however, do not have to be and do not have to be now. Our lives are contingent. His existence, which is life itself, is not. That we exist at all, that we are capable of entering into relations of reciprocity, relations governed by justice, is a possibility because of his gratuity. It is possible because of the gift of creation. God did not have to bring anything into being. God did not have to create, and yet he did. And it is only because of that completely unmerited and unjustified act that we are capable of enjoying anything at all. Now to compound this inherent imbalance, we have the long and sordid history of human sinfulness, in which we take the gift of creation, the gift of life, and we throw it away. We say to God essentially thanks, but no thanks. In justice, God owes us nothing. And certainly now, after squandering what was ours by gift, and not what was ours by merit, an obligation from God to us that didn't even exist in the first place has even less reason for being presumed. And yet, God gives us once more. The unmerited and unjustified gift of creation is itself surpassed by his coming amongst us in the person of Jesus Christ. Gift follows upon gift. The inexplicable gift of creation is now surpassed by the shocking gift of salvation. And that isn't the end of it. For that gift of salvation makes possible yet another gift, the possibility of becoming a partaker in God's very life. Creation is rescued by salvation, leading to the glory of deification. None of this follows from justice. Which leads us to the scene in the gospel we have heard proclaimed. Now perhaps our first inclination is to find it off-putting. It certainly seems unfair, unjust even, that the laborers who worked a fraction of the time are compensated with the same amount as those who worked so much longer. And if what was being described were a workplace, it would certainly be unjust. If I work ten times as much, I almost certainly should be given ten times the payment. But what is Jesus describing here? Not an office, but rather, as is explicitly made clear to us, the kingdom of heaven. It is the kingdom of heaven which may be likened by the master calling laborers into his vineyard. And in case we have forgotten, the kingdom of heaven ultimately belongs to God. It is God's kingdom by right, ours by gracious invitation. 
So like into the kingdom of heaven, we should look upon this scene with the master and his vineyard and the workers he invites to till that vineyard in terms perhaps we are unaccustomed to. Looked at properly, we recognize that the very offer the master makes to the laborer to till the vineyard is itself unmerited. If this vineyard is the kingdom and the master is God, then no one by rights is entitled to enter and enjoy the fruits of laboring on behalf of it. And yet they are so invited. And that invitation is itself gracious. And so what if the master wants to be excessively generous, profligate in giving away his gifts? So what if he wishes to be merciful this way? For note that mercy doesn't deny justice. As the master says to those grumbling about the seemingly injustice of it all, my friend, I'm not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. Well, what if I wish to give to this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do what I wish with my own money? Truly what the master is doling out isn't owed to us anyways. So what then if he wishes to dole out a little more than we in our stinginess might be inclined to dole out ourselves? There is a lesson contained here but that is the nature of parables. It is a lesson about God, about his generosity, but necessarily there is a lesson here for those who would like to share in God's life, for those who aspire to be laborers in the vineyard. If you wish to be like the master, you must of course be just, but the master is certainly that. He gives the wage that is owed. The laborers who work on his behalf are not denied their due. But while he is just, he is more than that. He is generous and merciful. He is always offering more than what is due. And the laborer that really understands this master would get this, and live that mercy and generosity which even exceeds justice. But truthfully, justice itself is unlikely to be realized if we prove incapable of an expansiveness of heart that won't allow us to simply settle for that justice alone but is instead desirous of a world which even more fully reflects the life of its creator, a world that is certainly just, but above all generous and merciful as well. And if we still struggle to see this, to accept this is true, then we might at least ponder God's words revealed to the prophet. My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are, my way, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. Now let us rise and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God and God, light and light, true God and true God, the God of our faith, our consubstantial of the Father, who in all things remain, for us and for our salvation. And by the Holy Spirit, who is the heart of the Lord, and the For our sake, he was crucified for Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated by our hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. Who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, and who is up in the process. And we give you all the glory of the Catholic and our Church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. 
trusting in our God who is both just and merciful, we now bring before him all of our needs. For the church, that her members may be unfailingly just and merciful with all whom they encounter. Lord, the Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hold public office and govern, that they may labor for a more just and generous world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those in need of mercy, that they have the strength to call upon the merciful God who is always near to them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the sick may be consoled and healed according to God's will, especially Kathleen Izzo, Anna Andura, Eileen Walters, Marcella Mayes, and all those listed in the book of the ill and infirm. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our departed loved ones, that they may dwell in Christ's abundant love for all eternity. And all those listed in the book of our beloved dead, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we offer these our needs, those that we have uttered, and those which remain in the silence of our hearts. Confident that you hear them all through Christ our Lord. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to it, their passing in this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as with the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. 
the peace of the Lord be with you always. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am unworthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that may come to possess your redemption both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Amen.